welcome guys in this video we are doing this simulation in abacus so this is how it looks from side view welcome guys in this video we will see how to analyze the plastic deformation of a steel bar uh, subjected to torsion okay let's save this one okay let's quickly create some parts this is the bar thirty mm wide and five mm deep and uh, three forty millimeter long okay one more part uh, a circular die of twenty twenty mm radius with a notch which is a equivalent dimension of the the steel bar okay so this will be have 30 mm deep dimension so let's move to property before that i will quickly uh, do partition for this Minus twenty and here this plus twenty. So normal to which that's fine so let's move to property we'll add a steel material see this this material data is available in abacus documentation so you can get it there elastic and plastic data so this is some kind of steel okay uh, let's create a section and assign this section fine and other part also the same section will be assigned steel section both are steel parts so move to assembly create instances so let's create some phase constraints this is parallel phase constraint this phase this phase are parallel one more this phase and this phase are parallel Remember these arrows needs to be point in same direction. Fine. Uh, let's create some face to face constraint. Uh, so this face will sit on this face. Click OK. Zero. Fine. And one more constraint this face will sit on this face okay fine now almost assembly is almost over but we need to translate this instance from From this point to this point. Fine. So 
so this is how it looks like after assembly assembly is completed so let's move to step and create uh, dynamic explicit dynamic explicit step with time period of 8 seconds and uh, one more step with 6 seconds so total period of analysis 14 seconds so let's move to interaction uh, but first we will create some surfaces mm. part 1 surface Part, part one surface is done. Part two will create surface. This, this. This and this. Holding shift you can select multiple surfaces. So now the surface is created. So let's create some interaction. Go to initial surface to surface contact. Uh, click on surfaces part 2 surface is master surface part 1 surface is slave surface select penalty and create a friction between steel material it is around 0.3 it may be different depending on the steel or uh, depending on the materials it, uh, the friction coefficient will change okay point point now that uh, interaction contact is created so let's create one uh, mul mpc constraint multi-point constraint so we'll take offset of minus five millimeters add a reference point so we select the reference point and the slave region Beam, beam MPC. So now MPC is also created. Let's quickly move to load. Uh, so we'll apply boundary conditions. Create initial in step initial step symmetry continue. So select all these four edges. Holding shift, you can select multiple edges. Turn in cast tray. So we'll create one more in step one. We'll create a displacement boundary condition. Select uh, reference point one. No transition in X, no in Y. Uh, Z is free to move. You, there is no rotation along 1, no rotation along 2. You will specify a rotation along Z, 4, 5. That is 2 rotations, 2 complete rotations. I will give a tabular amplitude, 0, 0, 8, and 1, 0. Uh, OK. Uh, it's great. Another boundary condition in step 2. Select the reference point 1. Done. Uh, U1, U2, there is no translation. In U3, we will specify a translation of minus 30 millimeters. There is no rotation in any of the axis, along any axis. So we will create one more amplitude 0, 0, 2, 0. So our second uh, step is of six, six seconds. Uh, yes, six seconds uh, of time period. But we will this translation will be over in the first two seconds and the and the remaining four seconds will be of uh, free inertia. 
okay uh, now we will deactivate the uh, boundary condition two we have specified they will deactivate in step two because we uh, we have constrained it in another boundary condition uh, definition okay uh, let's ensure that contact is propagated in all the steps okay loading boundary conditions is done we will quickly mesh it this part i will give four mesh uh, element type select explicit this part i will give 2.5 element type this is also explicit so this is how the mesh assembly looks like so go to job create submit This is completed. Let's check out the result. Okay, uh, there might be some error. What? This is supposed to translate in uh, opposite direction, Z in Z direction, opposite. What happened? Mm. Oh, this. Here I have done something wrong. So time frequency not two. It is uh, amplitude. We have one. Okay. Sure. So let's let's submit it again. Wait for the results. Analysis has been completed. Let's check out the results. Ah, uh, now it's good. <laughs> oh. Fine. So let's check plastic deformation. So, so this is the plastic deformation occurred during uh, the bending. Mm. Fine. So this is how it look, look look looks like. This is how it looks like. So we can also observe some amount of plastic deformation in the die also, right? Yes. The, so this just means the material is not strong enough. So instead of the normal steel, we could use a stronger stiffer material or we could simply improve or increase the size, size of the, this uh, metal piece, okay? So, so let's check how much how much torque is required. So go to OB field output, unique nodal, element set, nodal set. Since we not created any sets, we will fetch our reference point from these node sets. No, not this one, not this one. Mm -hmm. So this this is our reference point so we'll go to variables and select uh, reaction moment rm3 what happened i think something is wrong So let's go to the field output, unique model, select RM3, internal node sets, uh, not this one, yes, this, right, fine, fine, so, so neglect what is there after 8, eight seconds? So up to 8 seconds. 
we had a maximum moment required is 0.15 e power 6 newton millimeters so that's what that that much amount of torque is required to perform this deformation so this is how it looks like from side view so you can observe some wiggling around that end that is due to moment of inertia of the bar and uh, some elastic energy stored in that part. 